In this video, we are hopefully going to assemble a second order active low pass filter as a simulation in LT Spice. And we've previously put together a very similar circuit on a breadboard as well um, and observed the results using an oscilloscope. But hopefully, we'll get something comparable in this software as well. And we're going to view the frequency response in a board plot. So what I want to start to do is by putting this together, um, by the assembling the, the, the components, what I've put in the top right hand corner here is the, the function keys that I tend to use in this software rather than being too reliant on the menu bars. Um, so F2 to insert a component. So if I press F2, you might have to hold down the, the function Fn key on a laptop or similar if you've got a smaller keyboard. Um, Fn and then F2, um, but either way we get this menu here. And what I would like to do is insert an op amp. For now, I'm just going to insert the sort of generic um, op amp model, which I think is hidden right at the end here, op amp. Um, in fact, I'm not going to, I'm going to choose op amp 2 because op amp 2 has the um, power supplies, um, positive and negative power supply rails. Um, whereas the generic op amp doesn't, it's sort of assumed that it's powered. I want to sort of define what the the, um, the power supply is. So I'm going to use op amp 2 as the model. And I'm going to insert that there. And I need two resistors. So again, in the menu, I'm going to just go back um, up a level, which is just the little dot dot there to go up a level. And I should have a resistor. Um, generic resistor here, res, R-E-S, for resistor. Um, whilst I'm placing that, I can rotate that component by pressing Control R. Um, and I want two resistors. I want, uh, I'm just going to put them here for now. Um, and then I press Escape to get rid of that. I want two capacitors. If you're on a Windows computer, you can press C for capacitor. But again, just sort of doing it properly through the menu. Um, capacitor is just cap in this menu here. I want two of those. Um, so I'm going to put one. Uh, I'll rotate one of them. I'll put those there and there for now. And I want some power supplies. So I'm going to choose um, V for voltage, again, on a Windows computer. or from the menu, it's just voltage. Um, I want two of those over here, and I want another one on the right hand side. These are all the components that we need. And what I want to do is start sort of assembling those together. Spacebar is another good button to zoom to fit there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a couple of these around and connect them together um, in the form of a Salon key topology to put together this, this second order filter. And the way to do that is I want these two resistors in series connected to the non-inverting input of the op amp. And so I'm just going to sort of move those, F7 to move. I'm just going to move those in line to make it a little bit neater. And all I'm going to do is with a wire, again F3 for a wire, uh, I'm going to join my input voltage to the resistor, those two resistors in series to the non-inverting input. And just press escape to get rid of that wire cursor as well. Okay, um, the next thing I want to do is connect these capacitors. And one of these capacitors is um, connected in a sort of loop from the output, which is on the right hand side here, around to the midpoint of these two resistors. So again, I'm just going to use F3 for a wire. I want to take that output. I want to take that around um, to the capacitor, the other end of the capacitor. I'm going to take up to that midpoint there. Notice that join of the wires is denoted donated by is uh, denoted rather by that sort of blue block there, uh, which shows that the wires are joined. You want to see that where there's a connection to be expected. Um, that other capacitor, I'm going to take from the non-inverting input to ground. And so we haven't defined ground yet. We will in a second, but I'm going to move that 
uh, maybe about here and hopefully with a wire I can just take that straight down to um, the capacitor. And notice here I've made a connection where I shouldn't have. I don't want that wire joined to that capacitor and it's because that leg of the capacitor is in just the right spot to connect to that wire as well which I don't want. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to um, press F5 to delete. I'm going to delete that wire. I'm going to delete that wire. What I want to do is um, let's have a think. It's probably easier just to move this along just a little bit. So I'm going to press escape to get rid of the delete cursor. I'm going to press F7 instead to move. I'm going to move this just along a little bit and I'm going to try that again. I'm going to take a wire. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go in and up there. Notice that block doesn't appear here now. I'm not connected to this um, capacitor C1. Um, those wires should just sort of pass over one another like that without the block. So watch out for sort of unintended connections there. We mentioned ground. We'll not define ground. The letter G um, gives us that little ground connection. And again, I'm going to use F3 to just connect that. I want to do the same at the bottom of my input voltage here. I've inserted a ground and I'm just going to connect that up like so. The last thing that remains is to connect our power supplies, our bottom um, sort of negative power supply rail and our top positive power supply rail. And the way that I'm going to do that is using these two power supplies here. Again, just using wires. I'm going to join those to positive and to negative respectively. And I'm also going to join them together. But what I want to do is I want to define this sort of center point as zero as ground. And then that means that we've got a positive voltage with respect to ground at that center point. And we've got a negative voltage with respect to ground at that center point. And that means that we need another ground connection in here. So I'm going to insert that there. And again, just F3. I'm going to join that up like so. That's the actual construction of our circuit completed. I'm going to define some values here. Um, there's no sort of rhyme or reason to these. But what I want to do is try and make it sort of similar to the circuit that we connected together on a breadboard. I want to try and use the sim same values if I remember them. Uh, we use 1.2K resistors for the for both stages. We have two stages here made up of a resistor capacitor pair. Um, we're going to use 1.2K for both stages. And likewise with the capacitor, we're going to use 33 nanofarads, so 33N for nano. We're going to use 33 nanofarads for both stages um, here as well. So 1.2K, um, just defining that LT spice knows that K means a thousand, so 1.2K is fine. Likewise, 33N for nano. We've got some voltages here, um, which we've not really defined. Um, we'll make both of these 12 volts for the sake of this um, simulation. And the only other thing I'm conscious of is this input here. So the idea is we're going to ask LT Spice to run a range of frequencies through this filter. And because it's a low pass filter, what we're expecting to see is a high output or, or um, a sort of unity gain for low frequencies. The low frequencies are allowed to pass. In other words, we should get the same out as we put in at a low frequency. And then as the frequency increases, we're expecting some attenuation. It's going to drop off um, gradually as that frequency increases. So what I don't want to do is define anything here. I'm going to ask LT Spice to sort of take control of this input here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that um, voltage to edit it. And rather than inserting anything here, which is just a DC voltage by default, I'm going to choose advanced instead. And I've got loads of different options here, but I'm not going to choose any of them. I'm going to leave that on non. And instead, where I've got small signal AC analysis dot AC, I'm going to just type in AC for the amplitude. And 
really that doesn't mean anything. All I'm doing is I'm telling LT Space that the software is in control for this particular voltage source. And so all I have here is AC, AC. It doesn't really mean anything, um, but it rather tells LT Space that it controls this particular voltage source for the um, analysis that I want to do. In terms of the analysis, what I need to then do is our last sort of little step is to add an analysis command. And the easiest way to do that is to press the letter T. Uh, T inserts a comment or text. Likewise, I've got my sort of title here and these, these um, different notes down the side. They were just comments. I don't want a comment, I want a spice directive or a spice command. And I can type that directly in here if you're familiar with spice language or what's sort of sneakily hidden away I can right click here, help me edit, and I can choose analysis command. And this will kind of put the command together for us. What I want is an AC analysis. And what that does is it's gonna perform a frequency sweep. It's gonna go through a range of different frequencies. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna choose a decade sweep. And we'll see what that means in just a moment. And then I'm asked the number of points per decade. This doesn't really matter too much. I want to do 100. Um, and then it asks for a star frequency and a stop frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from 1 hertz all the way up to 1 megahertz or 1 million hertz, which in LT Spice sort of language is 1 meg. I could type 1 million uh, the same thing, it doesn't really make a difference for our purposes, but one meg is a bit easier then. So just to recap, we're going from one hertz all the way up to one million hertz or one megahertz. And it's going to do that in decades. And for each decade, it's going to take 100 measurements, essentially. And so when I click OK, I get this bit of text. It doesn't really matter where I put it. I'm just going to put it in the top. Uh, sorry, bottom left corner there for now. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is we're going to run the circuit. And I've forgotten something. And what I've forgotten is one last little connection, sorry. Um, we need a little feedback loop that goes around from our output again to our non-inverting input. So well spotted if you noticed I hadn't even finished the circuit there. That's the completed circuit there with that little feedback loop in place. I'm going to run this simulation again, and we still have a problem. I suspect it's something to do with this op-amp. So if you notice, this sort of generic op-amp doesn't have anything sort of filled out in its sort of properties. And I'd imagine that's something that we have to do. What I want to do is I'm going to use the move button. I'm going to take that op-amp out of here, actually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into F2 and let's um, go back to our op amps. I'm going to choose a different one uh, under op amps rather than what we used before, which I think was just op amp 2, I think. I'm going to use one of these, the universal op amps, um, because I believe these have parameters already included. So if I right click on one of these, you'll see that there's some sort of um, parameters that are there that weren't present in the sort of generic sort of blank op amp. I'm going to get rid of that one. Let's try, hopefully last time, we'll run the simulation and we're in business. Okay, so now we are running our simulation, but nothing much is happening. What I want to point out though, is that hopefully you can see the x-axis of our simulation here isn't for time, it's for frequency. We're performing that frequency sweep. And remember, we asked it to go from one hertz all the way up to one megahertz. And this is an example of a logarithmic scale counted in decades. So you remember that we defined that sweep in decades. Well, notice that the scale isn't linear, but rather it's going up in magnitudes of 10. So it goes from one hertz, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 10 hertz, and then 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 100, 200, 300, all the way up to 1,000. 2000 and so on, all the way up to a million. So each decade, each cycle of our logarithmic scale is an order of 10 
um, bigger in terms of its magnitude. So what I want to do now is hopefully plot the output. Remember the output of our operational amplifier is just the, on the right hand side there. I'm going to click, notice we have this sort of um, voltage probe cursor now that the simulation is running. I'm going to click there and we get something that looks like this. We have our roll off, which is what we expected in terms of frequency along the x-axis and decibels um, down the right-hand axis there. Um, there's a couple of things going on. We have the phase denoted on the y-axis on the right-hand side, and that corresponds with this sort of dotted line. I'll try and um, I'll move this down and make this a little bit bigger. So we have the sort of magnitude of the voltage um, in decibels plotted uh, using that left-hand y-axis, and that's the solid line there. I'll change the color, just right-click. I'll make it something a bit darker so you can see it a bit more clearly. We'll choose that dark blue there. But then we have this sort of very fine dotted line which corresponds with the phase. If you're interested in the phase, that's fine, but we can right-click on that and click Don't Plot Phase if we don't really want to see that and we just want to see the sort of magnitude. So there's our sort of board plot for... Um, the output um, frequency response, and hopefully you can see that it's what we expect in terms of our low pass filter. We have those low frequencies that aren't attenuated, in other words, they're at zero decibels. And by zero decibels, we mean to say that the ratio between the input and the output is one. There's no change between the input and the output. So the output hasn't been affected by our filter. But as the frequency starts to increase, notice we're getting past the sort of one kilohertz mark here, we start to see this attenuation, this roll off that increases as um, we increase the frequency, that, that attenuation gets greater and the output is therefore getting smaller. So I hope you found this video useful on how we can assemble a filter circuit in LT Spice and observe the results.